hi and hello to everyone in this video we are going to discuss about the effect of noise in the single sideband suppressed carrier receiver single sideband suppressed carrier receiver particularly we are going to deal about the coherent detection right okay so uh, this is the model for the single sideband suppressed carrier receiver using coherent detection right so you look at the demodulator so this is the demodulator circuit for analyzing the noise we are bringing this into picture okay so this is the modulated signal that is your single side band suppressed carrier modulated signal and it is added with the noise omega of t this is an gaussian noise and this passed through a band pass filter the output is x of t so what is x of t x of t will be having the modulated signal as well as the filtered noise n of t okay this omega of t is filtered that becomes as n of t then since it's a coherent detection what is a coherent detection we multiply the the signal with the carrier uh, with s with a cosine of the carrier frequency okay see for modulation we are using fc right the same frequency we are using in the demodulation part that in the receiver part also we are using the same frequency that is why they are called as coherent detection okay so x of t is multiplied with cos 2 pi fct we get v of t which passed through a low pass filter we get y of t now we are going to study about the effect of noise right that is a signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio at the input and signal to noise ratio at the output this can be said as signal to noise ratio of the channel snr c this is snr o at this point okay we will see that one by one okay first thing so this we know this is the expression for the um, single sideband suppressed carrier signal s of t right okay we know this is your c is a constant ac by 2 cos 2 pi fct message signal c c ac by 2 sin 2 pi fct m h of t m of t is the message signal m h of t is the hilbert transform of the message signal right okay that's what i said m h of t is the hilbert transform of the message signal m of t how this m, m h of t is obtained m h of t is obtained just by passing the m of t through a transfer function h of f what is h of s is minus j signum of f right what is signum signal this is the meaning of signum signal for the positive frequencies for the positive frequency this signum is 1 for the negative frequency this signum is minus 1 right if it is minus 1 minus 1 minus j it is plus j for negative frequency for positive frequency it is 1 right so it is minus j or else i can express this in the polar form right what is the magnitude of minus j it is 1 what is the angle it is minus pi by 2 so e power minus j pi by 2 okay for positive frequency for negative frequency what is the magnitude of j magnitude of j is 1 what is the angle for the j the angle is pi by 2 so i express this in polar form as 1 e power j pi by 2 okay so for this i am going to plot the magnitude that is your magnitude of h of f and the angle that is theta h of f right the magnitude is always 1 right the magnitude of minus j and plus j is always 1 what about the angle for the negative frequency it is um, for the negative frequency you can see clearly it is pi by 2 for the positive f greater than 0 it is minus pi by 2 right so these are the uh, magnitude and angle for the transfer function h of f or you can say hilbert transfer function right now what is the hilbert transfer function i said that it is the uh, output mh divided by mf right how will obtain a mh is nothing but if you multiply the message signal spectrum okay m of t is the we know what is m of t m of t is the message signal right m of t is the message signal what is m of f it is the spectrum of the message signal that is a frequency component of the message signal right okay so uh, we are getting this right so why i am explaining this is this is the relation this is the expression for the standard expression for the single sideband suppressed carrier which is having the message component as well as the hilbert transform of the message signal right how mh is obtained is just passing through a transfer function h of f what is h of f is this expression clear okay right now right so again i am writing rewriting this in this slide okay then what i am explaining this if a message signal is having a zero mean the mean of the message signal is zero then what i can do is this m of t and m h of t are uncorrelated what is the meaning of uncorrelated is that their power spectral densities can be added 
okay that is the power spectral, spectral density of this component and power spectral density of this component what is the difference it is for the mh this is for m of t this both can be computed individually and can be added okay so now we are going to find the signal to noise ratio so what is the signal this is the signal right so what is the power associated with this signal we very well know the power associated with the message we are assuming the power associated with the message the power associated with message m of t m of t power i can say power of m of t power of m of t is p okay similarly power of uh, um, power of m dash of t right power of m dash of t is also power of m dash of t is also p okay right then what about this it's a cosine signal right the cosine signal whatever we do this is the amplitude okay this is the peak value is cac by 2 so it is peak value divided by root 2 whole square right so peak value is cac by 2 divided by root 2 we are computing the rms value okay whole square right so rms value square is the power multiplied with what is the power of m of t which is p okay message signal right so if you do this for each of it we are computing this. so it's we are getting c a c c square a c square p by 8 c square a c square by 8 so i'm adding so this is the power of the single sideband spectrum suppressed carrier spectrum okay now what is the power associated with the noise right we know the noise is a gaussian noise since it is a uh, uh, since it is single sideband spectrum right the bandwidth is f fm so it is fm n naught okay now what is the signal to noise ratio of the channel that is the average signal power at the receiver input average noise power at the receiver input right we are seeing about the receiver so this entire thing is the receiver okay okay right so this is what we are getting okay so this is the signal uh, as a single sideband suppressed carrier signal right so we know the bandwidth is fm right if the bandwidth is fm and uh, if the bandwidth is fm the noise power is also fm n naught clear then what about the signal to noise ratio we are just we have just computed what is the power of the signal at this point what is the noise power at this point at the receiver end right okay that is your signal to noise ratio at the channel i can say that is average signal power at the receiver input divided by the average noise power at the receiver input okay so if you do this we get this expression right that is already we have computed this c square a c square p by 4 divided by fm n naught okay so we got this now we are going to compute the signal to noise ratio at the output output means where at this point Okay, so we have to compute y of t for that we have to compute the signal power at this point we have to compute the noise power right we will do that now okay so yes you see here so this is the noise we are taking right the this is the power spectral density of the noise right okay this is the power spectral this is power spectral city of the noise okay and you see here see here this n of t okay this n of t uh, what is n of t n of t is the filtered noise right this omega of t is the noise is passed through the band pass filter you can see here omega t, t is the noise passed through a band pass filter the output you are getting a noise n of t which is the filtered noise right that filtered noise is given by since it is a what i can say single side band it is a, uh, this is expressed in form of in phase component quadrature component i have explained this in the model video right okay there is a separate video where to represent noise in terms of in phase component this ni of t is called in phase in phase noise component noise component 
this is quadrature noise component right okay in phase noise component quadrature noise component right okay so uh, you can see that it is fc since it is uh, what is the bandwidth it is fm for a single sideband fm so it is minus fm by 2 and this also minus fm by 2 okay now uh, what is happening your x of t which is the band pass filter nothing but the modulated signal plus the um, noise right n of t right just uh, we know this already okay this is your s of t and this is your noise signal n of t right then uh, what is happening you can see here this blur diagram will be helping you x of t is s of t plus n of t it is multiplied with cos that is your v of t right okay so your x of t is multiplied with cos signal right so if you are multiplying this and you are cancelling out cos square you will be getting right if you are expanding this cos a minus b sin a minus b right and ultimately passing through a low pass filter okay having a cutoff frequency fm okay low pass filter which permits between cutoff frequency of fm cutoff frequency of fm right in that case the output will be this expression okay i mean i expect you to solve if you wish you can solve this right this is what the output of y of t right okay so we can clearly see from the output output is of two components which it is the message signal is here this is the message signal component right okay this is the noise component this is the noise component right so what is the signal power or the message signal power message signal power is nothing but the, the power of m of t is p so this is a constant term right you are just square that okay so it is c square a c square by 4 square is 16 right so this is the power of this signal then next slide we will be discuss about the power of this part the noise part okay okay what is the noise component this is the noise component right so the powers okay we can clearly see this okay how we are uh, uh, what is this power spectral density of n i of t and n q of t their power spectral densities are equal okay right this is the power spectral density of the n i of t and n q that is s n i and s n q right now we can clearly see use cos can be expressed as e power j and e power minus j by 2 sign like this right okay now what i am doing i am multiplying n i am substituting this here i am multiplying inside right okay right now this entire term I am written i of t, n i dash of t, n i dash of t. This entire term I am giving it as n uh, n dash q of t, right? So what is the impact of this? Any signal, a noise signal in phase component n i of t is multiplied with e power j pi f m t. What is the frequency of this? The frequency of this is f m by two. Okay, the frequency of this is minus f m by two. So this spectrum will be shifted to the left. Are shifted to the right by f m by 2 and to the left by okay plus f m by 2 okay that is advanced this side delayed by this side okay so if it is moving this side it will be this minus f m by 2 will come to 0 this plus f m by 2 will go to f m this part we will be getting similarly if it is advanced this minus f m by 2 will go to minus f m this f m by 2 will come to 0 we will get this right okay now um, right this is the power spectral density of the this component that is uh, n dash of t and n dash q of t it is the same for both you may ask it's a j term here but it doesn't affect the power anyway right since we are squaring uh, the magnitude we are going to take this denominator j is not going to have any impact over it clear okay so what is the output noise power the output noise power So what is the output signal power? Okay, what is the output signal power? Previously, in the previous slide, we have derived that we c square a c square by 16 p. Here it is, c square a c square p by 16. Now we have de de uh, derived the noise output power f m n not by 4. If we derive, we get this. Okay. Now we have derived two things: signal to noise ratio are for the channel input 
signal to noise ratio of the output so what is figure of merit figure of merit is nothing but the signal to noise ratio of the output and signal to noise ratio of the channel input a c right so if it both are the same so it is one so this is the good one right okay the figure of merit one is good right it is the same for the double sideband suppressed also using coherent detection right we'll make we have made another video you can watch that there also for the single sideband suppressed carrier and double sideband suppressed carrier for both the receiver we are using coherent detection in that case the figure of merit will be one right i hope you learned something useful in this class any doubts you please feel free to ask okay put your uh, uh, queries in the comment section i'm very happy to help you thanks for listening